Good morning, year three. I hope you've had a good week. Okay, this week I'm going to be reading you the first chapter of this book. Now, the title is There's a Pharaoh in Our Bath, and the author is Jeremy Strong. I'm going to read the blurb on the back of the book to give you some context about what the story is about. Ben and Carrie's dad has brought a 4,000 year old pharaoh home. He's been asleep for a very long time and after a cheese sandwich and a chat, the children discover who he really is. He's a mummy on the run from two mean grave robbers who want his treasure. Ben and Carrie are to the rescue. Okay, so that is the synopsis, the brief summary of what our story is about. And now we're going to go to the first chapter and find out how this pharaoh has ended up in two children's house. So, we can start off. As you can see, this chapter is called A Surprise from the Past. And this illustration here may be to see there's a pharaoh with two men looking at it. Okay, so let's start. The lid of the cobwebbed coffin was slowly pushed back and the two men laid it carefully on the museum floor. But they stared inside at the beautifully painted ancient Egyptian mummy case covered with picture writing. Daylight was already beginning to fade from the musty storeroom. The other museum staff had long since gone home and the only company left with, with the two men now were stacks of old mummy cases, ancient skeletons and a large stuffed rhinoceros. F Professor Jelly pulled the lamp closer and inspected the hieroglyphics. The light shimmered across his moon-like face, making the pearls of sweat on his brow sparkle like tiny jewels. What does it say? demanded Grimstone. The head of the museum's ancient Egyptian collection stared over Jelly's shoulder. Is it the mummy of the missing pharaoh? Professor Jelly took a sweet from his jacket pocket, pocket, popped it into his mouth and bent over the mummy case. Hmm. Hazelnut crunch. Now this squiggly bit here says, may perfumed flowers be crushed beneath his feet. Very poetic. But who's inside? Grimstone barked impatiently, and his great winged eyebrows crushed together over his hooded eyes and hawk nose. He stabbed a thin finger in, at one side of the coffin. What about here? What does this say? It looks important. Professor Jelly sucked noisily on his sweet. That bit there? Yes. That says, please keep this way up at all times. What? yelled Grimstone. And that bit, continued the professor, waving at some faded hieroglyphs with a pudgy hand. That bit there says, not to be opened before Christmas. For a few seconds, Grimstone was stunned. Then his eyes glinted dangerously. You're making this up? Jelly, aren't you? The professor straightened his tubby frame. Of course I'm making it up. Stop pestering me and let me study it properly. This mummy has been stuck here for 70 years already, ever since it was first brought to the museum from ancient Egypt for the collection. A few more minutes wait won't hurt. Once again, Professor Jelly bent his glistening bald head over the mummy case while Grimstone strode angrily around the cramped room until he came face to face with the stuffed rhino. And you can stop staring too, hissed Grimstone. This could be the discovery of the century. It could make our fortunes. We could be millionaires. The clue to a fabulous treasure is in that coffin. He turned back to Professor. Come on, Jelly, get a move on. The professor was still translating the hieroglyphs on the coffin side. He who opens this coffin will 
be cursed by Anubis. There now, just our luck. We're going to be cursed by Anubis. Who's Anubis? demanded Grimstone. He was the ancient Egyptian god of the dead. Had a head like a jackal? And what kind of curses does he make? Oh, usual sort of thing. May your body be devoured by giant ants for thousands of years. May your heart be torn from your ribcage by crocodiles. Jelly popped another sweet into his mouth. Grimstone had turned pale. Um, do you, do you, do the curses work? No idea, replied Jelly. Nobody has ever lived to say. Ah, listen to this. His voice rose of excitement. Here lies the most sacred body of the royal pharaoh whose name shall rumble down the ages. It's him. It's Senapod, the missing pharaoh from the fourth, fifth dynasty. The two men grinned madly, grasped each other by the hand and began to waltz around the room, crashing to old mummy cases and sending clouds of dust into the eerie gloom. We'll be rich, yelled Grimstone. We'll be famous, cried Jelly. Senapod, panted Grimstone, coming to a halt. Known to the ancient Egyptians as he whose name shall rumble down. The ages we know from ancient Egyptian writings that a massive treasure was buried near his tomb, and a map showing its location was hidden in the coffin. Nobody has ever found the coffin until now. Can you find the map, Jelly? We shall have to open the mummy case. What about the curse? Curse the curse? What about the treasure? snapped Grimstone. The two men gingerly levered open the lid, sweating with the effort. The cold silence was broken only by their grunts. From every side they were watched by the unblinking painted eyes of dead priests and ancient Egyptian princes. They lifted the lid from the base and there he was, Senapod. Over 4,000 years old and wrapped entirely in rather smelly yellow bandages. Grimstone clapped one hand across his face and staggered back. Phew! Oh, he does pong! So would you if you'd been dead that long, snapped Professor Jelly. But look, Senapod is holding some parchment. It must be the map. The professor gently pulled the ancient paper from between the mummy's stiff bandage fingers. It crackled as it unfolded, and little pieces broke from the edge and drifted to the floor. Professor Jelly held it to the light, cleared his throat, <coughs> and began to read. From the land of the West, the great and serene gods of ancient Egypt, greet Senapod, king of the Nile, lord of the serpents, Master of Hippopotamuses. Master of Hippopotamuses, repeated Grimstone. Are you making that up? Professor Jelly shook his head. The ancient Egyptians always put in things like that. It made them feel important. The professor scrutinised the centuries-old message. The room suddenly grew darker and much colder. The upright stacks of coffins seemed to close in around the two men. Jelly shuddered and went on. Listen, from the land of the West, the great gods of Egypt spit upon the worm who is reading the secret curse. Thou hast broken the seal of the pharaoh Senapod and littered his sleeping place with thine worm-like presence. Even as thine worm eyes read this curse, Senapod will arise before you and strike you down, thou worm. Oh, they didn't like worms much, did they? Put in Grimstone. But Professor Jelly carried on reading. He is the mighty warrior who must be obeyed. His is the name that shall rumble down the ages. He is the risen Osiris, and his cat is the... Jelly's voice died in his throat. Something was gripping his arm fiercely. It was Grimstone clinging to the professor with one hand and pointing horror-struck at the coffin with the other. Even as the two men trembled 
and stared, transfixed with terror, they saw the mummy in the case begin to twitch. The yellow fingers moved, the bandaged mouth struggled open, and fresh air hissed into the ancient lungs as they began to breathe once more. The head lifted with a jerk and the body sat up. One leg raised itself from the coffin and the mummy slowly rose to its feet, with bandages falling away and trailing on the floor. Grimstone and Jelly tried to scream. They opened their mouths, but their voices had run so far away they were impossible to find. The men tried to escape, but their feet were rooted to the ground. They stared at each other, stared back at the advancing mummy tried to climb up each other and fell to the floor in a gibbering heap. The pharaoh centipod, lord of serpents, master of hippos and crusher of worms, stepped over the quaking bodies, crashed through the door and stumbled out into the dark and rainy night. It also just so happened to be his fourth, four thousand and six hundredth birthday. And that is the end of chapter one. So your literacy task for this week is to write me a set of instructions on how to throw a birthday party for a 4,600 year old pharaoh. Now you're not going to find any instructions for this birthday party online. I don't think anyone's ever thrown one for someone so old before. So we're really going to have to use our imaginations and think creatively about what a pharaoh would like to eat, what a pharaoh would like to drink? What games a pharaoh would like to play? You know, how are we going to do this? If you go into Seesaw, you'll see an example of one that I have written. So go and take a look at that. And then I look forward to seeing your responses. Remember, the sillier, the better. I can't wait to read them. Have a lovely week. Goodbye.